Hello and welcome to Dr. Brainwaves. I'm Dr. Susan Rochelle and this is Dr. Rena Azar. Today we're going to talk about medullary sponge kidney. Fortunately, it's a rare condition, so if you hear the symptoms, don't automatically think that you have it. Dr. Azar, what causes medullary sponge kidney? MSK is what we're going to call it from now on for obvious reasons is a disease of structure abnormality, which affects function. So people who have MSK have little tiny, little tiny, tiny cysts throughout the kidney that affect their ability to do their job. And one of the major jobs of the kidney is to filter. And one of the things that they'll filter is minerals and salt. But if there is an anatomic abnormality, those minerals and salts can't do what they need to do, and that's get out in many cases. And so a couple of things happen. Because of the minerals building up, you can get a kidney stone or multiple kidney stones. The other thing that can happen is, again, because of an anatomic abnormality, you may develop bacteria that get stuck in there, and as a result, you can have urinary tract infections. Absolutely, and so most people who have MSK present with frequent bladder infections, mm -hmm and frequent kidney stones. And I actually want to mention that they're obviously going to be more prone to just not normal bladder infections, but infections that get all the way up in the kidneys. And you can see the video on urinary tract infections to understand that difference. Mm -hmm. At any rate, MSK is a disease that you need to know about. If you have it, you need to know that there are several congenital, meaning inherited disorders that can be present. So when you see your doctor and they diagnose you with MSK, then they're going to be thinking about some other things that you might have as well. These are also rare problems, but I'm just going to quickly go over them. One is Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. It's a hemi-hypertrophy syndrome. In English, that means part of the body or half of the body is developed more than the other. That can translate into one leg longer to the, than the other or organs on one side of the body being bigger than the other. The important thing about that is that all these people, although these people are generally healthy, they do have an increased risk for certain childhood cancers. Mm -hmm. Another syndrome that we see associated with MSK is Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a syndrome of abnormal vasculature and musculoskeletal problems. One of the things that you'll notice in people who have Ehlers-Danlos is that they're hyper flexible. I can't do it, but they can take their finger and they can touch their wrist and they tend to be a little bit more taller in stature and tend to be very lean. Mm -hmm. And we have a video on that as well mm -hmm. to discuss the kind of lifestyle problems and adaptations that people need to make who have that condition. Mm -hmm. There's also another rare disease called Caroli disease. Mm -hmm. This disease is not going to sneak up on you. If you have MSK, you will get imaging studies such as a CT scan that will show potentially that you have Caroli disease, which is a disease of dilated ducts in the liver that can lead to liver failure. Mm -hmm. We're trying to save your organs here. Another thing that's really important for people to know is that if you have MSK, you may also have polycystic kidney disease. And as you saw from my other video, polycystic kidney disease is associated in a significant number of people with renal failure, chronic renal failure, and sometimes loss of the kidneys. So your doctor will be looking for that as well. Three other things that we will see independent that are not congenital uh, is just a tendency to get chronic renal failure that's not related to polycystic kidneys, and that has to do likely with the frequent number of urinary tract infections and kidney stones doing damage over time to your kidneys. Because when scarring sets up, then you can't, you can't fix that tissue once it's scarred, which is why it's important to listen to some of these videos that we're sharing with you so that you can try and prevent these things from happening to you or a loved one. Right. Two other conditions that you will be prone toward if you have MSK are going to be hyperparathyroidism. We feel that that does not usually proceed, but we feel like it's probably in part resulting from, but the relationship is not completely understood. Uh, and one other condition is osteopenia, which is fortunately uh, pretty reversible with adequate vitamin supplementation. So those are some things you're going to look for when you have MSK. So we talked a little bit about the fact that they usually present with kidney stones mm -hmm. and urinary tract infections. So when we're talking about treating MSK, we're talking about really just trying to treat kidney infections properly and kidney stones properly and prevent both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, 
How is it diagnosed? Usually MSK presents as a patient who re comes in repetitively and uh, has stones and infections. And then the doctor starts to say, maybe we need to look a little further and see what might what underlying process may be proning this patient to this. In addition to that, uh, we also will notice things on imaging studies that could be suggestive of a problem with MSK. However, unfortunately, most imaging studies that are done for urinary tract infections and kidney stones, such as ultrasounds and CT scans, do not actually usually detect MSK. So additional studying in the form of a pilogram as a test that will probably need to be done to sort that out. And it's good to describe the pilogram to them, the use of dye mm -hmm. going through the mm -hmm. kidneys. So we inject a dye, it goes through your vascular system, it's collected by the kidneys, and it highlights all the structures of the kidneys, the ureters, and the bladder so that we can see that urinary tract system really nicely. So how is somebody treated if they have this condition? Well, there is no cure for MSK, mm -hmm. but we do recognize that you have to be very aggressive about treating bladder infections and kidney stones to prevent prolonged scarring. Mm -hmm. uh, people who have this need to be aware that they need to take kidney infections seriously. So if they have bladder symptoms, they need to come in sooner than somebody else would. They need to be more aggressively treated with antibiotics, stronger mm -hmm. antibiotics for longer periods of time. Uh, and they may need to be considering a prophylactic or preventative antibiotic approach. In addition, they need to be in good care of a urologist who will manage their kidney stones really well. And we also know from kidney stones uh, that people can do 24-hour urinalysis that will show what type of kidney stones people have and allow them potentially to modify their diet or supplement their diet to prevent certain types of kidney stone formation. Uh, there's also a particular diuretic that can help prevent certain type of kidney stone uh, formation. These MSK patients are prone to quite a few different types of kidney stones. So uh, making sure to treat urinary tract infections, aggressively trying to prevent renal stones and having a good urologist that can help you to take care of the renal stones when they do occur is really, really important. What can you do? What can you do as an individual who has MSK? Mm -hmm. One thing, you can drink lots of fluids, two to three liters a day. Helps to keep the flushing of the kidneys going through, helps to prevent infections, and has been shown to decrease the uh, symptoms of kidney stones and bladder infections for these particular patients. There are not a lot of studies that have been done on this particular disease process because it's so rare. But there is a really good study that shows that decreasing sodium, decreasing animal protein, meat, eggs, fish, and keeping that down to six to eight ounces a day and increasing your dietary calcium are all things that can reduce uh, stone occurrence, for example, by 50%. There's a very good study showing that. Um, in addition, most people who have MSK will need to have some following closely with their nephrologist and or urologist, and that will include periodic monitoring of the 24-hour kidney function tests that will still tell us about how well we're regulating your electrolytes or minerals and salts to prevent stones. And usually a one 24-hour test is indicated annually to evaluate that. In addition to that, radiologic imaging to look and make sure that we're keeping uh, your, kidney occur your kidney damage and kidney stone occurrence to a minimum uh, is recommended annually. So usually a CT scan will be done once a year with these folks. Mm -hmm. And that is an overview of a relatively rare but important disease to know about, MSK. Thanks Thank for visiting. You.